It is May 8th. We are looking inside the morning newspapers as we do every morning at about 610. And we start with the Minneapolis Star Tribune business section. The struggle over building tall buildings in Minneapolis, it is never ending. But the front page business st section talks about a 40 story condo just across the river from downtown Minneapolis. It's moving closer to happening. Uh, this case went to the Court of Appeals, but they ruled that the city was okay to approve a 40-story building, even though it is in the St. Anthony Falls Historic District. Variety section. You'd think that wedding reception could be like herding cats. This isn't happening for Allie's wedding reception, but it is happening throughout the Twin Cities. Penguins, two toad sloths, turtles, yes, weddings at Como Zoo now feature the opportunity to rent an animal ambassador. Just about 250 bucks an hour, which, let's be honest, is probably the cheapest thing you'll get at your wedding reception. The former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, came to St. Paul. He is a 1961 graduate of McAllister College in St. Paul. He had a big day of events. Pioneer Press wraps it up. He was here for the 30th anniversary of Books for Africa, which is a nonprofit in St. Paul. Pioneer Press wrote about how he is finding hope in young people today. Front page of the USA Today talking about sex ed in the Me Too era. Morality versus reality is the issue. There is a federal program that funds the teaching of abstinence and birth control. Started in the Obama administration, the Trump administration wants to end that program. The debate about sex ed has been going on as long as sex ed has been taught in schools for sure. Big news from Ad Week online this morning. The top creative officer at Fallon, the ad agency in Minneapolis, is leaving town. Jeff Kling is famous for creating Dos Equises, the most interesting man in the world campaign. A lot of people love working for him over at Fallon. He told his staff, though, that he wants to move his family back to New York and take some chances professionally. Uh, this story in the New York Times arts section we have to be a little careful about. It may confirm your worst thoughts about modern art with a story about being exposed from head to ankles. The first nudist tour of the Palais de Tokyo. There's a modern art museum in Paris. Well, they did wear shoes. Some museums have done naked tours for shows that are connected to nakedness. This was not. The reporter, Thomas Rogers, said it was pretty cold. Museums aren't normally calibrated temperature-wise for people to be nude. No, probably you not. Know what? At least their I mean, feet were warm. You, the artists are bearing their soul and perhaps bearing your everything is the way to go. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm more like the Rent-A-Penguin story, but that, uh, that's fine. <laughs> the Naked Art Agreed. Museum? Naked not Art for you? Museum. Not, yeah. not for me. Nope. All right. Uh, well. Yesterday would have been a great day for it, though. Don't. <laughs> We can just leave it. Uh, I mean, I got to tie it to weather somehow. You didn't have to. <laughs>